how does how does the thinking stuff that we were talking about and just starting apply to some other businesses either that you've seen other people run or that you've been involved in yourself? Well, we have all of these marvelous stories that you end up uh, seeing on television, mm -hmm. you know, on the Bloomberg specials about entrepreneurs, et cetera, and so forth. And it's like these ideas kind of came out of the thin air or people have been working these ideas for years. You know, Starbucks in reality was born uh, out of the 1,465 customers who really didn't like Howard Schultz's first venture, Il Giornale. Right, okay. tell us that story. Uh, That's a great so story. And so the reality of that is when you look at a place like Starbucks, everybody visualizes by the time the books were all done, it was, you know, this man had this deep passion uh, for creating an authentic Italian espresso bar in the United States. And so he went off from Seattle to Italy and had a vision, mm -hmm. and Starbucks was born. And the reality is, like many of us, this was an entrepreneur uh, who actually cared deeply about coffee, um, who actually developed a robust business plan at a terrible time in the market for actually being able to attract funds for coffee, because mm -hmm. uh, coffee was experiencing 20 years of its market share declines, uh, and that in fact cola beverages becoming the preferred source of caffeination for young people at this point in time. So it's not the time to start a sophisticated coffee business, right. but by George, he was absolutely committed to it. Uh, the, the, in Just New, Nancy Kane, a, histori a historian, uh, documented that he took this business plan to 252 people and the vast majority of them thought it was completely idiotic, no, so he you. couldn't yeah. raise anywhere near the amount of money that he had fantasized would be required to get started in this grand vision of what happened. So he started something much smaller. Uh, he started a chain called Il Giornale, a chain, one unit chain. It had nonstop opera music. It had a menu that was completely in Italian. Uh, it had baristas wearing tuxedo outfits. It was really authentic in all of those respects. Uh, but because you couldn't raise enough money, it was stand-up. You know, so when you think about the dimensions of Starbucks today as the third place with comfortable right, seating, right. you know, its pre progenitor uh, Il Giornale wasn't anything like that. So what did you discover the first five days? You know what? People, by and large, they might like opera in the moment, but a mass population doesn't want opera from open to close. Right. No one could have predicted, who in their right mind could have predicted uh, that Americans, and now a global population, would prefer to learn a completely artificial language. It's true. Okay, rather than speak Italian. Okay, So no one wanted to go into this place and have to speak Italian to order uh, authentic beverages. Uh, and quite honestly, when you pay that much money for a cup of espresso-based beverage, you really don't want to stand, okay? right. particularly if you're coming to and from work or you'd like to have a comfortable experience to listen to the opera music. And the baristas, okay, in the early stages of uh, cappuccino espresso machines, the splashback <laughs> literally would ruin their uniform within <laughs> five minutes of the start of the day. So. Uh, so essentially, baristas are miserable five minutes into it. Customers don't want to hear the opera music. They no don't want to speak Italian. Sit. There's no place to sit. Right. No surprise, they didn't love the place. Yeah. Okay? Now, what do you do when, in fact, you discover they don't love it? Well, if you're deeply wedded to a plan, you suck your thumb. Right. Okay? And you get morose and depressed okay, about the failure of your plan. If you're a successful serial entrepreneur, if you're someone committed to just getting started and Figuring moving on, out, right? you just you figure that the 1,465 upset customers who didn't really enjoy your place are the source of all of the wisdom for what comes next. Right. You talk to them. And so my argument very simply is that Starbucks was born of the co-creation activities mm. of Howard Schultz and a collection of customers in what otherwise would have been defined as a failure. Absolutely. Okay? But really, um, if you actually thought about the reality of his experience of recognizing up front, this isn't working the way I fantasized, okay? um, his ability to turn that uh, into the data and the support and the commitment of this population of people who at least expressed interest in paying $4 for an espresso-based <laughs> beverage right. was really the source of the wisdom that created both the concept and the market. Right, so he started with one plan right. that he was pretty committed to in the time, saw, gosh, this isn't working like I hoped, and made some shifts. You know what, if anybody tells you the <laughs> truth, and there's a lot of retrospective analysis about what I'm goes sure. on in this space, but if anybody really tells you the truth, 
I honestly don't believe that anybody's operating business looks anything like the plan they developed. I would agree with that. And so, uh, so the reality is you can look at that and say, oh my God, this is a complete failure. Right. Okay? Uh, or you can basically say, isn't it wonderful that you actually managed to quickly divorce yourself from a plan that became obvious it wasn't working. Yeah, okay? what is that saying? Fail, fast, cheap? Yeah, well, you know, right. and again, the, everybody has different ways of talking about it. So over the past several years, it was all about fail fast, fail off, and fail cheap, okay? And the reality is, you know, your viewers who are listening to this conversation, you know what, when we start talking about failure, that's another opportunity for them to turn off. Basically say, you know what, I don't want to actually get into a situation uh, where there's a reasonably high probability that you're going to fail. Well, there's a reasonably high probability that your first idea is not going to be your best idea uh, and that your first venture doesn't have a high probability of success.